Okay, this will be video number two for the Thermal Solutions EVCA boiler. Here is the first wiring diagram that we looked at. I'm going to zoom in here and show you at the top of the diagram. Uh, here is the ground L2, L1. This is your three, or excuse me, your three wire single phase power coming in, hot neutral ground. You can see that the ground, chassis ground, goes right to the G terminal on the 7800 um sub base so so you know if you if you remember on the traditional flame safeguard you know uh, every flame safeguard has a g terminal for ground here's terminal number two on the flame safeguard uh that's the neutral and you follow the fuse down here and there's terminal number five on the flame safeguard that is the power terminal so if you looked at a traditional flame safeguard the rm 7896d model you would see that terminal number five is is labeled as 120 volt power terminal number two is neutral and g is ground here's terminal number three terminal number four terminal number three is the alarm relay so anytime you have power on terminal number three or the only time you would have power on terminal number three is if the flame safeguard went into alarm and terminal terminal number four here would be anytime that you want the blower to start. Um, I want to go over this alarm silence, alarm bell circuitry here. Um, you see, if you remember, um, well, I guess we scroll down. When you looked at this drawing down here um, on the circuit board where the 7800 sub base is, you see all of these K1, these are, these are all relays. So, so when you when you look at that, you saw K2 was the alarm relay. I think K5 was the blower relay. But just for a little reference there, um, what all this means. But um, here you have K2, which is the alarm relay. And when you scroll down here, you'll see here is the switching side of K2. That um, right here is the coil. When the relay energizes, there's the coil for it. Here is the actual uh, switching, common, uh, normally open terminal, normally closed terminal. So power comes in here, comes through the normally open terminal. When K2 energizes, this terminal goes, or this contact closes, that one opens. And power comes up here, goes over to terminal number 32 of K5. And then if the K5 relay is not energized, Power goes to the alarm bell, and then the other side of the alarm bell goes back to terminal number two, which is your neutral. So the alarm bell rings. If you want to silence the, re the, the alarm bell, you can press this silence button, and it puts power on relay K5, which is called an auxiliary relay. And when it does, this contact here closes. Power goes this way. and goes down to or here's the, the power coming in this was a little bit confusing so i made my own little drawing and this is the kind of thing i would expect you to be able to do when you look at this and you see that here's the relay that tells or, or is supposed to enunciate that there's an alarm condition the flame safeguard has failed for some reason because of a flame failure or some, some type of failure um, when this relay energizes it turns on this bell but you want to have the ability for somebody standing outside uh, or standing next to the boiler to push a silence button that silence button does not reset the flame safeguard does not make the boiler restart it only silences the alarm bell the only way you're going to reset the flame safeguard is to actually open up the panel and get to the reset button that's actually physically on the front of the flame safeguard but this is a way of being able to enunciate with an alarm bell, have a silence button that will silence the alarm bell, but not reset the boiler. So, um, you know, this this kind of confusing how K2 here and K5 there and silence button and alarm bell, all that's laid out. So I, I made a little sketch and I, hopefully this makes sense to everybody. 
um, because I'm going to ask questions about this, and I think this is an important thing that you need to understand. But here is terminal number three of the RM7896. This is the alarm terminal. This is the power that you get, 120 volt power right here, anytime the flame safeguards an alarm, and it energizes relay K2. Well, here's the contacts for K2. There's power coming to terminal 47 on one side of the K2 uh, relay contact. Power leaves on terminal 48. It goes uh, with a jumper from 48 to 32. This was on the diagram we were just looking at. If K5 relay is not energized, this terminal or this contact right here is closed, Power goes out on 33, and here's the alarm bell. So anytime K2 energizes, this goes closed. Power goes straight through it. Through there, the alarm bell rings. Now, if somebody presses the silence button to silence the alarm, they push this down. This is a momentary contact normally open. Makes when you push it closed. A momentary contact normally open push button. Uh, when it closes, you get power here to terminal 3, which energizes K5. Now, if you were going to hold the button down, then K5 would energize, and this contact here would go open, and it would be fine, and you, you would silence the alarm, but as soon as you let go of it, the alarm would come back on, but not the way it's drawn, or not the way they connect it here, because once you energize K5, it is opens this contact, but then it closes this contact. And now you have power coming from K2 down through 32 through this contact that just closed. And now that is going to energize K5, which is going to keep this contact open. The alarm bell is not going to be on, but as long as power is coming through K2, now we have a way of energizing K5. So when you look at this, K2 and the silence relay are kind of in parallel with each other, along with this normally open contact of K5, and that's what gives you that latching circuit, so that when you press the silence button, it will energize K5 and silence the alarm bell because this contact goes open, but it'll close this contact. When this one goes open, this one goes closed, and now we have a parallel path to keep K5 energize, which means that you can release the silence button. Hopefully that makes sense. That's uh, relay logic uh, 101 kind of stuff that, that everybody should know. And, and I, I, I will ask some questions about that. I'm not sure how I'm going to word it, but uh, I, I want to ask some questions about that because I think it's, in, it's important to, to understand the, uh, the logic of that. Uh, getting back to the diagram, um, here you see the, this obviously would be power coming out to the pump motor starter. Here is the blocked air filter switch and light. Uh, here's the switch, uh, pressure switch. Here's the actual light. Um, anytime you see this blocked air filter light on, that means that that automotive style filter that filters the air going into the blower needs to be cleaned or replaced. Um, you would first pull the foam element off and wash it. Um, it's a washable type foam element, element, and then you would um, either blow out the pleated air filter with uh, a nitrogen or air, compressed air, or put a new element in there, a new filter element in there. I think uh, Thermal Solutions would prefer you buy a new one from them every year. Um, of course, that's how they make money. Um, so that's pretty much everything over here. Here's the uh, VSD terminals, VSD, VFD. Um, some people say variable frequency drive. Some people see, say variable speed drive. VSD, VFD means the same thing. But that's the terminal that would actually start that K3. You see here K3 is the blower motor. Um, contacts for K3 right there. Tell the VFD to close. We'll see that again on the diagram below. Uh, here is the um, low water cutoff, the McDonald Miller 750 MT120. And, and I'm not going to do what I've done in the past with, with showing you uh, a separate um, reference sheet for all the components because you can, you can look that up now. 
This is an MM750 MT120. If you type that in a Google search, it will come up. McDonald Miller 750 electronic low water cutoff. Of course, you've got the ground and the probe, just like any electronic low water cutoff. It has to read conductivity through the water. You have a neutral, you have a hot, and then you have your switching circuit. Um, this would be power going in on three, coming out on five goes through a thermal fuse in the vestibule. Um, so if, if something was to catch on fire in the control cabinet, that would shut everything off. But um, power coming through and goes into a low water cutoff sense. And, and I'll show you what this is, but actually when you're following this diagram, power comes through the thermal fuse to terminal number 11. There's an internal jumper from 11 to 12. It goes down or excuse me, goes out to the burner on off switch. This is a toggle switch on the front of the boiler. It comes back to terminal 13, jumpers down to 14, goes out to the water flow switch. Got to have the pump running. Uh, comes back to 15, goes out on 16, goes through the high and low gas pressure switches. This is part of the uh, ASME CSD1 requirements that you have high and low gas pressure switches. Comes in on 17, goes out on 18. Here's your operating limit and your high limit. These are your separate uh, operating and high limit controls um, separate from the TSBC controller. Comes down here, you've got a, another um, jumper here for unused operating limit circuit. Uh, comes down here to the combustion air switch. If the blower over here where it says VSD start. Uh, if the combustion blower is not running, you wouldn't have that. So you have a, a terminal there. Um, and then finally, through the uh, function of the flame safeguard, once it, sh it sees all of those and you get power on terminal number, se number seven, it goes through the ignition sequence. Terminal nine is your main fuel valves. Uh, eight is your ignition, uh, or excuse me, the, the pilot gas valve, 10 is your ignition transformer, uh, G and F here, that's your UV scanner. I'll keep track of the time here. Uh, the thing that is, is kind of neat about this is you see here where it says low water, burner on off, water flow, gas pressure, high limit, combustion air, main fuel valve, all of those go to terminals here and they've got kind of initials here that show those terminals, but those terminals actually through a ribbon cable go down to the TSBC boiler control and that's how the flame safeguard and the information that comes from these uh, safety controls here can be enunciated on the two-line display of the thermal solutions boiler control is because it actually can monitor whether or not the uh, low water cutoff is made the burner switches on or off by um, power on these terminals with a ribbon cable coming down to the thermal solutions uh, display. Okay, still got a, a few more minutes here. Uh, from the TSBC, the thermal solutions boiler controller, you have those inputs from all of your safety circuits. Uh, here is the output to the variable speed drive, uh, the AC Tech SCF. Um, I did want to show you that because I think an AC Tech a SCF VFD, when you see one, you'll, you'll want to know what that, that looks like. Um, and it is shown on, on the um, main page. There's a picture of the AC Tech SCF VFD. Um, information about the particular VFD, this is what uh, thermal solution uses but if you look at that and you think well that looks a lot like the carrier motor master there's a carrier motor master for condenser fan controls fourteen hundred dollars worth of VFD uh, yeah it's the exact same thing carrier buys these from AC Tech and puts their little label over top of it so that you would never know that that really is an AC Tech VFD and to be honest um, you could probably buy from the lens group uh, this AC Tech drive online for about half of the price that Carrier charges you for it, but uh, Carrier actually gives you a pressure transducer with it that um, doesn't make up for the price, but you know that's that's how they kind of justify, I guess, uh, charging that much money for something like that. 
uh, I'm going to stop this video and we'll get on with the third video and the actual um, connection diagram down below.